You're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. Today we afford you an opportunity to take a look inside an incredible community organization, REMSA. Let's get started with Don Von Arks, Chief Operating Officer. Since its inception in 1986, the Regional Emergency Medical Services Authority, REMSA, has provided high quality, high performance pre-hospital care to the citizens and visitors of Reno Sparks and Washoe County. These quality and performance standards are monitored through multiple levels of independent external oversight, including the Washoe County District Health Department, the District Board of Health, the REMSA Board of Directors, the EMS Oversight Committee. These oversights results in complete accountability and transparency for the services that REMSA provides. Kevin Romero is the Vice President of Operations for REMSA. And Kevin, there's a common misconception about REMSA just being an ambulance service. There really is, Mitch. You know, we always say EMS is just a little bit about what REMSA does. We really are involved in the community much more. Uh, we got our community health programs. We have Care Flight, the Education Department, uh, paramedics working on uh, tactical EMS with the SWAT teams, search and rescue, and we're really embedded in the community. We have an identical fleet of 42 ambulances, about eight support vehicles, and annually we run approximately 70,000 calls a year. REMSA is rather unique compared to other ground ambulance services. Yeah, I think it's the community that makes REMSA unique. Reno and Sparks is really truly a 24-hour town, and there's not many of those across the country, you know, other than Atlantic City and Las Vegas. So our paramedics here get a real good mix of uh, trauma versus medical, um, and uh, the call volume is, is pretty similar day and night. We're constantly rotating ambulances in and out of the system. Call volume stays very similar. We staff our ambulances with a paramedic and an advanced EMT. REMS is actually prepared for large scale incidences. We are, and unfortunately, we've had our share of mass casualty incidents in our community. Uh, we're constantly training our staff on how to respond to those types of events. Um, I would say a number of full-scale event simulations take place every year, along with a lot of tabletops. And I always tell the uh, new workforce coming into EMS today that it's a great time to get into this profession. EMS is changing and ever-evolving, and uh, especially the management team here, we look at to come up with new innovative ideas of how we're going to run EMS in the future and how we're going to be integrated uh, in healthcare and work much closer with the hospitals and uh, be an industry leader in that type of stuff. This is Todd Kerfoot, the Special Operations Manager with REMSA and also you oversee the TEMS, Tactical Emergency Medical Support Team. And if you could tell us what that is and when it got its start and why. Well, back in 1997, we recognized the need uh, to get medical care into volatile situations like the North Hollywood shootout, um, which resulted in a, a delay of treatment for the suspects and victims. We learned at Columbine that traditional responses didn't work, you know, having ambulances stage out of the area, waiting for police to clear the scene, it just people lie bleeding. And so we decided that we needed to embed tactical paramedics with the SWAT teams so that we can provide point of injury care rather than waiting outside. Back in 1997, we were one of the first few to create the team in the United States. Since 2008, we've responded to over 300 SWAT missions and over 700 trainings. TEMS members have been involved in calls like hostage rescue, barricaded subjects, high-risk search warrants, active shooter incidents. TEMS team provides support as needed to uh, agencies like the FBI, Secret Service, DEA, U.S. Marshal Service, Homeland Security, and other rural police agencies in the Northern Nevada region. Really proud to have you working in our community. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Scott Zettelmeyer is a paramedic with the REMSA Search and Rescue Team. And I noticed this badge on your shirt that you're connected somehow to the Washoe County Sheriff's Office. How does that work? Well, the REMSA Search and Rescue paramedics are fully sworn members of the Washoe County Sheriff's Hasty Team, which is the technical search and rescue team for the county. We specialize in technical backcountry rescue, high angle, low angle rope rescue, mine rescue, swift water rescue, helicopter hoist rescue, uh, public safety diving, 
and it's one of only a handful of search and rescue teams in the country that has fully integrated ALS medical capability. Reno Tahoe is an outdoor playground. Whether you like to play in the wintertime or summertime, if you like to do stuff outside, this is a place to be. We get people that are lost, injured, um, or otherwise incapacitated, need some help, uh, either skiing, snowshoeing, snowmobiling, uh, scuba diving, boating, fishing, uh, riding motorcycles, mountain biking, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of backcountry space here that people need help in. What are the most common calls that you respond to? Frankly, the most common call is going to be for the day hiker who goes up on a local trail, uh, a little bit unprepared perhaps, with just a bottle of water and maybe a, a t-shirt and some tennis shoes, and uh, sprains their ankle or something like that. That's probably the most common call. We also get a lot of calls for boaters in distress at Pyramid Lake. I understand that you also work with the Raven, the Washoe County Sheriff's helicopter. We do. Uh, Raven 3, uh, the, the Sheriff's Department, Huey, uh, is also used for search and rescue. It has a hoist capability. There's a team of uh, people that are specialized from the Hasty team to hoist out of the helicopter. And Remza has uh, the only paramedic in the county that's authorized to hoist and uh, rescue people from the helicopter. This is Sark Eric, paramedic supervisor and special events coordinator with Remza. Now we see your services all over our community at special events. What kind of services does Remza provide? REMSA provides EMTs, paramedics, full ambulance crews, RNs, and even physicians, depending on the size and the type of event. These medical practitioners provide advanced life support or basic life support. We also set up stationary medical stations that provide everything from basic first aid up to your advanced life support. Our special event teams travel on foot, by bicycle, on these emergency medical carts, or even by ambulance. This allows us the most responsive care to the patients. It allows us to extricate patients from some of the larger venues out to an ambulance if they do need transport. One of the great things about living and working in this community is the number of special events we have. This community really embraces them. REMSA services over 500 events in a calendar year. Everything from a dance up to some of our larger community events, hot August nights, rib cook-off, street vibrations, Reno Air Races, the Balloon Races, Reno Rodeo, just to name a few. Our goal is to provide medical services to the participants at these events without affecting the regular 911 system or the community we serve. If you see us out there, come up and say hi, we love it. We're inside the Emergency Medical Dispatch Center with Adam Hines, the Communications Director. What makes this call center so unique? You know, one of the things that we are most uh, proud of here at REMSA is our ACE accreditation. Uh, ACE stands for an Accredited Center for Excellence. This award, uh, in which we've held since 2001, so over 15 years, um, is through the International Academy of Emergency Medical Dispatcher. And something I think uh, many people don't know is REMSA is the only one that holds this accreditation in the state of Nevada as well as we are also co-located with a nurse health line uh, that is also ACE accredited. That is the only one in the entire world. Um, so we're talking about things that we're very proud of. The other thing that I think makes uh, REMSA Communications unique is our staffing model. When you call 911 and you receive REMSA, you're going to be talking to somebody that has received a national certification, which is an advanced emergency medical dispatch. Those people have a minimum of an advanced EMT, but I also have paramedics on staff. One of the nice things about those people is uh, one day they may be sitting in a chair taking 911 calls. The next day they could be actually running 911 calls and actually touching patients, uh, which I think is an important perspective because when people call us, um, they're scared, they're vulnerable, they don't know what to do. And they're receiving a medical professional. Uh, something that a lot of places don't have. When you call 911, a lot of places you have somebody that may have non-medical training that is going to get you the, the help that you need. But in the interim, our EMDs, or our emergency medical dispatchers, are able to provide direct care, and we call that dispatch life support. Dispatch life support is an evidence-based way or, or protocols in which we provide instructions over the phone to people that call 911. They're looking for guidance and I like to refer them as the, actually REMSA's first first responder because we're able to provide them care while they await a REMSA paramedic ambulance. Things that we're able to do, CPR, chest compressions instructions, airway management, hemorrhage control, as well as delivering children. We have a call taker that is going through those uh, evidence-based protocols providing care on the phone. Um, 
At the same time, once we've confirmed that address, we have another dispatcher that's deploying the closest ambulance. We use some sophisticated software that allows us to be able to do that, to identify the closest unit. You know, one of the questions that we get a lot is, is, is you know, I see an ambulance parked in this grocery store parking lot. Why are they there? This sophisticated software program called Marvelous allows for us to take years and years of data, statistical data, and actually begin to target areas in which we're going to allocate our resources. This is a very efficient way of managing uh, the deployment of ambulances. Unlike kind of a station where it's static, we're able to position ambulances where there is volume, where there's call volume. In addition, we have um, some specialized communication folk that do air medical and they're called air medical communication specialists. These folks' job really are to coordinate the, the, the skies while other uh, air ambulances are coming into the area. They're providing ETAs, they're providing communication with the hospital and making certain that these guys are safe. Brenda Staffen is the Director of Community Health Programs and that makes me want to ask, what are community health programs? Rumsa's community health programs have three components. First, the Rumsa Nurse Health Line is staffed 24-7, seven days a week, with registered nurses. And the nurses are able to navigate patients to the right level of care 24 hours a day. Since launching in October of 2013, we've received over 50,000 calls from Northern Nevada and Northern California areas uh, around Washoe County. Um, the Nurse Health Line is accredited by the International Academy of Emergency Dispatch and is available to all residents and visitors regardless of their insurance status. Second, our community paramedic program is assisting patients in the transition from hospital to home. Our community paramedics have received additional training, visit patients in their home after they've been discharged to the hospital, and assist them in completing their care plan, but most importantly, be healthy and be safe in their home. Our transport to alternative destinations is the only place in the United States where we have the ability to transport to 16 alternative destinations. Low acuity patients are being transported to urgent care centers and clinics. Patients with behavioral health needs are transported directly to the mental health hospital and patients are also being uh, transported to our community triage center. And what is so beneficial is that patients are getting the right level of care. Overall, all three programs have saved over $7 million over three years. And most importantly, our patient satisfaction scores are extremely high and the experience of care for our patients is improved. We've received um, many accolades for our programs, featured in USA Today, featured in Kaiser Health News. Governor Sandoval of Nevada signed the community paramedic legislation into law in June, and we are currently working on sustaining all three programs, working together with our clinical partners and our payers on uh, making these programs part of the future of the healthcare delivery system. J.W. Hodge is the Education and Community Outreach Manager here at REMSA. If you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about how the education program works here. Absolutely. So we have two parts of education. We have uh, EMS education for your EMTs, paramedics, um, advanced EMTs. But we also have a public education component where we teach anything from basic CPR, babysitting classes, all the way through advanced cardiac life support for doctors, nurses, paramedics, pediatric advanced life support, and other programs. And we are currently standing in the simulated lab, Correct. sim lab. Yep. Tell me what goes on in here. So we use this room for a lot of our courses. We use this room for all of our EMS courses, our paramedic classes, EMT classes. We also do some strictly simulation classes for outside entities, um, transition to practice type classes. And we can do anything from a delivery of baby, cardiac arrest, seizures, um, all of our high fidelity mannequins talk, cry, bleed, urinate, some deliver babies, some seize. Uh, but we can do anything that we would want to simulate in a real patient we can do in the lab. And we also take these guys into ambulances and then drive through town mimicking the bumps and turns of the road and do the same things that we would do on a normal patient but we do it on a fake patient. You work with other agencies as well. 
Correct. We work with a lot of other agencies in town. Specifically, we work with all the hospitals, the regional fire departments. Um, we work with hospitals out of the area, and we provide any education they need, anywhere from CPR, ACLS, PALS, or things that could be specific to what their needs are, IV classes or any other educational components they would need for their programs. We also offer um, classes to individual companies in town. So we have partnerships all throughout the region, if you will. Jim Begbie is the chairman of the Board of Trustees for REMSA, and Jim's going to tell us about the board and their responsibilities. We have seven board members, community leaders, we're all volunteers. It's an exciting opportunity to help the community. The hospitals, all three of them, each get an appointment to the REMSA board too, and the hospital appoints a consumer representative as well. As chairman of the board, I'm really happy to report REMSA is really in, in a good, strong position. The thing that's exciting is that we're a world-class organization and the community has really respected and approved what we have done. And we feel really good with all of our community partners. I'd like to spend a minute talking about CareFlight. CareFlight's the air medical uh, service that we provide and we've done this for 35 years. We're in our 35th anniversary year uh, in 2016. We provide this with an outstanding group of highly trained flight nurses and flight paramedics. We do it with four A-star aircraft. We cover approximately 45,000 square miles in northern Nevada and northern California. We do inter-facility flights, scene flights, and provide uh, clinical care to pediatric patients in a full line of adult patient care also. CareFlight is a CAMES accredited program, it has been CAMES accredited since 2002. Uh, we also have communication services um, with CareFlight and RIMSA. The communication center is an ACE accredited um, communication center. We have dedicated um, aircraft communication specialists for CareFlight. Combine that with our outstanding pilots, outstanding flight nurses and flight paramedics, and our mission to provide a very valuable service to Northern Nevada and Northern California. Uh, we believe CareFlight is an outstanding flight program. This is Tana Dixon, a CareFlight flight nurse. First question I have to ask is, what does that job look like? What does it entail? That job looks like a lot of things. Um, our main thing is we bring an ICU environment directly to our patients, whether it be a hospital transport uh, or a scene call, which are usually our trauma patients. We also get to do things that physicians would normally be doing in a hospital setting, such as intubations or chest tubes uh, if our patient needs it. So we really bring a higher level of care to our patients um, in a variety of settings. Describe for us a typical day in the life of a flight nurse. Oh, there's no typical day. We check our helicopter in the morning, make sure our equipment uh, is in good working order. So when the call comes in, we're ready to go. I can only imagine how incredibly rewarding this job must be. You're absolutely right. It's very rewarding. You know, of course I love flying, but you know, the best part about this job is, you know, taking care of somebody's father, somebody's mother, son or daughter, you know, helping to save their life, you know, and, and getting them home in a full recovery. That's the best part about this job. One of the things that CareFlight uniquely can provide to our partners in the rural communities are critical care type courses that we um, are able to bring to them on a regular basis so that they can actually um, start applying some of the concepts and advanced physiology that we teach to the care they provide in their community. Could you share a little bit about the Transport Professional Advanced Trauma Course and what makes it unique? The Transport Professional Advanced Trauma Course is um, a course that's written by and sanctioned by the Air and Surface Transport Nurses Association, which is a national flight nurse association. Um, the thing that makes it unique is it teaches advanced physiology for nurses, paramedics, respiratory therapists that actually work in transport medicine. The courses that we teach are based on the most recent research studies. We are providing our partners with updated information about how care is delivered even in the big tertiary centers. That definitely improves their care at the bedside in the rural facilities as well as um, on the street side with our uh, fire partners and, and uh, ground paramedic partners. East Fork has got a great relationship with CareFlight because they're based here within our jurisdiction. It's outstanding being a, a rural frontier fire department that does EMS transport that's an hour away from our local trauma center and has an air medical helicopter that we can put a patient on and get them to that facility within 20 minutes as opposed to by ground transport where it's taking them 52 minutes to an hour 20 to get to that same facility. So having CareFlight here helps us 
provide for the patient. And that leads us into the working relationship we have because they are right here in our jurisdiction and we see them every day because they're based at our Carson Medical Center, our primary hospital we transport many of our patients to. We get to be more involved with them than some of the other departments are that doesn't have that, uh, that helicopter sitting at a base in their jurisdiction. We had to do training with them. They come over once a quarter and we'll have one of their nurses or a critical care paramedic come over and train with our firefighter paramedics. So that way we get to play more together and make build those relationships pre-incident and not at the incident scene. And then also part of the community, they participate with us in Douglas County Healthcare Coalition. They help us with community flu clinics. They help us decide or make determinations on how we're gonna fix some of the community issues related to healthcare, along with Carson Valley Medical Center, uh, the other medical helicopters, our public health and law enforcement. We would encourage everyone that's interested in a career in pre-hospital care to look at REMSA and CareFlight. We believe we offer a nationally competitive salary. We offer 401k. Um, we offer relocation bonuses, uniform allowances, education allowance. Uh, we have our own continuing education program within the organization. Uh, we also offer uh, multiple opportunities uh, for career advancement. Um, that can be going into our TIMS um, organization. It can be working on care flight. Uh, it could be um, focusing on, on providing education or um, looking at management career ladders. We do have employees that participate on tactical paramedic SWAT teams. We also have employees that participate with search and rescue. We have employees that also participate in special events. There's multiple opportunities for someone that would come into the organization to learn different aspects of pre-hospital care and grow within the organization and have a long-term career with REMSA and CareFlight. This is Heather Bushy, a flight nurse with REMSA Care Flight. First question people would want to ask you probably is, what made you want to become a flight nurse? I chose Care Flight and REMSA um, right after I finished paramedic school in January of 1999. Um, I was very impressed with the organization and the people uh, when I was going through paramedic school and working with them. And I felt because of its urban location, it was one of the busiest ambulance programs in the area that um, working there, I could be the best paramedic possible. I focused mostly on being a field employee. Um, the part that I enjoy most about this job is taking care of patients. So I have focused my progression mainly on remaining a field employee rather than getting into leadership or management. Once I was a paramedic, I entered into training where I um, trained some new paramedics as a preceptor. After that, I joined the ranks on care flight, uh, became a critical care paramedic where um, I have stayed for the last 16 years working as a critical care paramedic. Um, in August of last year, um, after gaining experience um, in the critical care setting of the hospital in the emergency room at Renown, I started flying as a flight nurse, transitioned to the flight nurse position. The other opportunities that you have is uh, the REMSA Care Flight Company values the input of their field employees immensely. And I've actually taken part in some leadership positions, although I haven't held any. I'm committed to taking care of patients, and a big part of that is serving our communities. Um, I live here in Gardnerville, so the patients that I take care of out of this base are gonna be my neighbors, my friends, and my family, and that's very important to me. And the company that is gonna allow me to serve the community that I live in is CareFlight. They've been serving Northern Nevada and Northern California for the last 35 years, and I've been lucky enough to be part of it for the last 16. Where do you see yourself in five or 10 years? You know, I'm not sure uh, where my career is gonna go. Um, it's very important to me again. Um, it's the field aspect of this job that I enjoy the most, um, taking care of patients. But I also know that with CareFlight, there is gonna be opportunities for growth and for change. Um, so I'm excited to see what the future holds. Cindy Green is a paramedic, EMS supervisor, and coordinator of the paramedic program here at REMSA. And Cindy, where did you get your start? Well, I actually started my EMS career on a different path. I originally thought that I wanted to become a firefighter. So once completing high school, I started taking classes for both fire and EMS in college. After getting some patient care experience and working with a fire department nearby, I realized that patient care and working in a pre-hospital setting on an ambulance was really where my heart was. 
if you just take one step in, in a direction, if you decide that you want to go into a totally different direction here at REMSA, the opportunity is there for you. I started out as an EMT in special events. I went on to become an intermediate on the ambulance. I went to paramedic school at REMSA. I worked as a paramedic on the ambulance. I became an EMS supervisor. I then went on to uh, work in the education department, which is what I do now. I run the paramedic program for our education department, but that's just me. If you decide that you don't want to be in patient care anymore, we have plenty of different avenues to go down. We have the communications department across the street where you can work in dispatch. We have, if you are on the path of EMS and you want something more, we have tactical EMS. We have community health. If you want to get on a helicopter and work in critical care, we have that option. The options and the opportunities here at REMSA truly are endless. I am a full-time educator, but I do work one day a week on the ambulance, so I get to practice the things that I teach, and I also get to socialize with everybody in the EMS system. I've been at REMSA about six years. I've done all of my EMS training here, from uh, EMT basic through EMT intermediate, uh, paramedic school, and critical care paramedic, uh, as well as a number of other classes. Um, I started out driving the, uh, the wheelchair van. Uh, while I was going through school and eventually moved out to be an EMT intermediate on the ambulance and now for the last couple of years I've been a paramedic here on the ambulance. Um, I love working here. One of the reasons that I stay is I'm interested in EMS. Anything you want to do in EMS you can do here at REMSA. If you want to work on the ambulance full-time, if you want to work in education as, a, as an instructor full-time, if you want to fly at CareFlight, if you want to work in dispatch, we have special events, we have specialized teams like the, uh, the Thames team and search and rescue which I'm a member of. So all those different things to me, if all you want to do is EMS, this is a great place to be. Cody Clifford is a paramedic with REMSA. Cody, what is it that you find attractive about this area? This is a very unique area that has a lot to offer. I can go up to beautiful Lake Tahoe to swim or kayak. I can float down the Truckee River. I can go to any one of the 16 ski resorts on the Sierra Nevada mountains. I can go out in my backyard in the high desert valleys to mountain bike or trail run and then I can finish it off downtown, have a night out, enjoy the great food and the vibrant area down there. And I think the Reno Tahoe area is just very unique given all those aspects. Matt Hoth is a communication supervisor here at REMSA. How did you get involved in this kind of work? Um, it all started back home. Uh, my parents got in a really bad uh, ATV accident um, and nearly died. And um, when I got there with the first responders, um, I was unable to help them with anything. I felt helpless. And uh, from that point on, I, you know, I really figured out that if that ever happened again, I'd be able to, to help someone. What has your career path been like with REMSA? Um, started back January of 2012. Um, worked on an ambulance as an EMT intermediate. Progressed into dispatch, um, became a training officer, and now I'm a communications supervisor. I love what I do. It's like a family here, and I couldn't imagine working anywhere else. For more information on this guest, or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.